Hey everyone, today I want to talk about biology and politics. Specifically, how politicians and policies that don't take science into consideration will end up hurting the living world around us. Today, I want to talk about Trump's proposed border wall. The general idea, as Trump describes it, is that we have excessive migration from Mexico and Latin America, and that this migration is associated with negative things like crime and gangs and low-skilled labor that displaces workers who are native to the U.S. Trump's solution to these problems is a wall. As he called it, a big, beautiful wall. Now, there's a lot of problems with this. Namely, a lot of Trump's fears are totally baseless and not grounded in any fact at all. There isn't excessive migration from Latin America. In fact, there's been more of these people leaving the U.S. in recent years than coming in. Second, the immigrant populations that are coming in are less violent per capita than U.S. citizens. Statistically, they aren't bringing crime. They're actually diluting crime by pushing up the proportional number of people who are law-abiding citizens. Third, the economic damage that's caused by immigrant labor is wildly exaggerated and totally misunderstood. Studies have found that the immigrants' impact on labor is negligible. And in many cases, when immigrants and their families are kicked out of a community, that community actually begins to suffer because they never acknowledge the economic boom that immigrants bring. They're willing to do a lot of jobs that other people aren't willing to do. And if you kick them out of your town, no one's going to do those jobs. There's a lot of towns in Georgia that learn this the hard way. So without going on a long political rant, the thing that you should take away from this is that every justification for Trump's border wall is factually baseless. Even subjectively, it's a really ugly proposition. I fundamentally abhor structures that are built solely to satisfy racist and fearful sentiments against the outsider. A wall that's built to divide people and dehumanize people is exactly the opposite of beautiful. I think that's unethical and disgusting. So with all of this out of the way, the real thing that I want to talk about, the science, is how this proposed wall will affect wildlife. A new study published in the journal Bioscience examined the theoretical outcome on the ecology of a giant physical barrier that stretches for 2,000 miles through the American Southwest. The scientists examine how current structures, like fences and ditches, have already interrupted animal populations, and they discuss how additional construction and bigger walls will only make these outcomes worse. First, they point out the construction of the wall will necessarily violate environmental protection laws. For example, the 2005 Real ID Act allows the Department of Homeland Security to just ignore any and all laws to build the wall, including ignoring federal regulations that protect endangered species and sensitive or ecologically critical habitats. The second point that the researchers make really gets into the meat and potatoes of the problem. They're talking about the environmental impact that a wall would have. They point out that there's six ecoregions that the wall would pass through, and within these large regions, there are over 1,500 animal species, more than 60 of whom are critically endangered, endangered, or vulnerable. There are five spots in particular that are, quote, top priority areas of high biological diversity and binational investment in conservation, unquote and these would be disrupted and probably destroyed by the wall. The researchers say, quote, Like any large-scale development, construction of the wall and associated infrastructure, such as roads, lights, and operating bases, eliminates or degrades natural vegetation, kills animals directly through habitat loss, fragments habitats, thereby subdividing populations into smaller, more vulnerable units, reduces habitat connectivity, erodes soils, changes fire regimes, and alters hydrological processes, e.g. by causing floods. As of 2017, the DHS has constructed 1,050 kilometers of primary pedestrian and vehicle barriers serviced by 8,000 kilometers of roads, as well as many thousands of kilometers of undesignated routes created by off-road patrol vehicles. Human activity, light, and noise associated with the wall further displace wildlife making additional habitat unavailable. The border wall threatens some populations by degrading landscape connectivity. 
Physical barriers prevent or discourage animals from accessing food, water, mates, and other critical resources by disrupting annual or seasonal migration and dispersal routes. For example, continuous walls could constrain endangered peninsular bighorn sheep, Ovis canadensis nelsoni, from moving between California and Mexico to access water and birthing sites. It will be likely impossible for endangered animals, such as the Mexican gray wolf, Canis lupus belei, and Sonoran pronghorn, Antilocapra americana sonoriensis, to disperse across the border to re-establish recently extirpated populations or bolster small existing populations. As climate change and increasingly warm, dry conditions redistribute resources and shift habitats in the borderlands, the wall may prevent some populations from tracking these changes. Fragmented populations may suffer from reduced genetic diversity and face greater extinction risks. A continuous border wall could disconnect more than 34% of U.S. non-flying native terrestrial and freshwater animal species from the 50% or more of their range that lies south of the border. If cut off by a border wall, 17% of the 346 species we analyzed, including jaguar, panthera unca, and ocelot, Lepardus pardalis, would have residual U.S. populations covering 20,000 square kilometers or less. This would elevate their risk of extirpation within the United States, according to IUCN Red List Criteria, Table S1, Appendix S1. Unquote. All of that was a quote from the researcher's work explaining in great detail how Trump's wall will just cause biological havoc. This is inexcusable and it's unacceptable. The last point that the researchers make is that the wall would directly harm scientific research in the affected areas. The authors cite extensive financial and labor investments that have already been made to protect and study these protected habitats and biomes. And they explain how the wall would physically disrupt these ecologies and impact the science. They say that it would not just disrupt the communities of researchers and financiers and put scientific ventures in jeopardy, the construction would also soak up federal and state dollars that would have otherwise gone to conservation efforts. On a much darker note, they also cite both Mexican and U.S. researchers who have been delayed, harassed, and intimidated by border agents, and how research work and administration is slowed down when scientists have to go through an arbitrary number of security checkpoints. The researchers end their paper with a call for unison among scientists to reject the border wall and fight against its construction for the sake of the wildlife and the sciences that are used to study it. I solidly support the effort of these scientists because Trump's border wall is not just needless and destructive and expensive, it's inhumane, it's cruel, and it's downright stupid.